In this video, we're going to do some calculations related to titration of a weak acid with a strong base. In the last video, we looked at strong acid, strong base calculations involving titration. And the nice thing about these was that all reactions were irreversible and complete. We didn't need to worry about any equilibria. For example, HCl was the acid analyte. Cl- is a negligibly weak base, so we don't need to worry about its reaction with water to produce hydroxide. For example, an HCl is entirely dissociated into H3O plus and Cl minus from the get-go, so no equilibrium involving HCl either. In the weak acid situation, things are different. We need to worry about reaction of HA with water and reaction of A minus with water, potentially, depending on the concentrations of HA and A minus around. So in addition to applying the titration reaction in a stoichiometric sense, since that's going to be an irreversible and complete reaction, we're going to need to think about some equilibrium calculations related to the acid ionization of HA and the base ionization of A minus. All right, so let's take a look at this problem. We've got a volume of 25 milliliters of 0.1 molar acetic acid, CH3CO2H. We're just going to call that HA. That's the weak acid analyte in blue. And we're titrating it with 0.1 molar NaOH. And that is, of course, a strong base. So this is a strong base weak acid titration. And as in the previous video, we want to know the pHs at four volumes of added base solution. None, 12.5 milliliters, 25 milliliters, and 37.5 milliliters. All right, let's start with no titrin added. That's just a 0.1 molar solution of HA, the weak acid analyte. And so what we're dealing with there is a weak acid solution at a concentration of 0.1 moles per liter. So we can think about the origin of the pH here is going to be reaction of HA with water. We've got a pKa value for that. And just to save us quite a bit of time, I'm just going to say, and I encourage you to pause the video and work this out on your own if you need the additional practice, that applying the ice table approach and the typical approximations, x is small, for example, and zero initial hydronium, we arrive at pH is equal to the negative log of Ka times 0.1, and the 0.1 is there as the initial concentration or total concentration of HA to the one half power, the square root of Ka times the initial concentration of acid. And this comes out to 2.87 as our initial pH. So quite a bit higher than 1.00, which was the initial pH in the case of a strong acid at a concentration of 0.1 molar. Uh, and this is exactly what we would expect, right? Because this is a weak acid. So just a weak acid solution. We didn't need to worry about sodium hydroxide at all because none has been added yet. The next volume is 12.5 milliliters. And now we do need to start worrying about the titration reaction, which is up here in the upper right-hand corner. HA reacts with NaOH to produce Na plus A minus. You can think about that as the conjugate base of HA, as well as H2O, as well as water. And at 12.5 milliliters of sodium hydroxide solution added, we've consumed a portion of HA. We've converted a portion of the HA into A minus, since both solutions, the HA and sodium hydroxide solution, are at the same concentration, and we haven't added 25 milliliters of the hydroxide solution just yet. So we've got a mixture of aqueous HA and A- at this point. And specifically, we want to calculate the concentrations of HA and A- in the solution at this point, and we're going to apply a familiar equation at the end of this process for reasons that will become apparent after we've calculated these concentrations. The reason this is going to get us closer to the pH is that the pH is dictated again by this acid base equilibrium here, this acid ionization equilibrium, the reaction of HA with water. With a mixture of HA and A- minus in the solution, we need to know both of these concentrations if we want to find the equilibrium H3O plus concentration and the pH from there. So how do we find the HA concentration? Well, we take the initial number of moles we started with, we subtract out the number of moles of hydroxide added to this point, which will convert that HA into A-, and then we divide by the total volume, which includes the 25 milliliters we started with, as well as the 0.0125 liters, or 12.5 milliliters, of sodium hydroxide solution added. And this comes out to 0.033 moles per liter for the concentration of HA. Now, what about the concentration of A minus? Well, all, pretty much all, the A minus in solution comes from 
the reaction of OH- with HA, this irreversible titration reaction up here. And we can think of NaOH as a limiting reactant in this situation. So the number of moles of hydroxide added is going to be equal to the number of moles of A- in the solution. So that number of moles of hydroxide added is this expression in red, concentration times the volume added, and we again divide by the total volume here, 25 milliliters plus 12.5 milliliters. And this too comes out to 0.033 moles per liter. So notice at this point, we're halfway to the equivalence point. We have consumed half of the HA and converted it into A minus, and now we're at a situation where the concentration of HA is equal to the concentration of A minus. What does this mean for the pH? Well, if we stop and think for a second, what we have right here is a mixture of a weak acid and its conjugate base in aqueous solution. That's a buffer. So we can apply the henderson hasselbalch equation here to calculate the pH, which is equal to the pKa of HA, the weak acid, plus the log of the concentration of A minus divided by the concentration of HA. And since those two concentrations are equal, what we're doing here is essentially taking the log of 1, and the pH is equal to the pKa of HA, 4.74. So at this point, I, I just want to pause and point something out, that if we were measuring the titration curve, what we could do is go back to the point that is halfway to the equivalence point. So we would know, for example, it took, let's say, 25 milliliters to get to this point on the x-axis. At 12.5 milliliters to get to the, uh, at 12.5 milliliters along the x-axis, we're then halfway to the equivalence point. The pH at this point is equal to the pKa of HA. And so a titration curve provides a means to measure pKa as the pH of the analyte titrant mixture at the halfway to equivalence point. It's pretty cool in that respect. All right, so with 12.5 milliliters of hydroxide solution added, we're halfway to equivalence. The pH is equal to the pKa of HA. That's 4.74. Now let's think about the pH after 25 milliliters of sodium hydroxide solution have been added. Since this volume is equal to the volume of the original analyte solution and the molarities of the analyte and titrant solutions are equal, this exactly is the equivalence point. We've added enough moles of sodium hydroxide to fully neutralize AJ. What we've got at the equivalence point then is a solution containing Na plus A minus in water, an aqueous solution of the conjugate base of the acid. And so we can think about the pH of this solution in terms of the pH of salt solutions, which we've talked about previously. And in order to find that, we need the initial concentration of the conjugate base A minus. That comes from the initial concentration of acid, since all of that has been converted into A minus, divided by the total volume, which here is going to include a contribution from the original analyte solution, as well as the titrant solution added, the 25 milliliters of sodium hydroxide solution added there. So the initial concentration of A minus solution at the equivalence point is 0 0.050 moles per liter. And here we mean initial in the context of an ice table, because what we're going to do next is think about that A minus reacting with water. We're going to turn on the reaction of that weak base with water to produce HA and OH minus. And that OH minus is going to be what drives the pH at the equivalence point. So we should expect a final pH greater than 7. This is going to be a basic solution. All right, so how do we proceed with that? Well, the first thing is write a balanced chemical equation for the reaction of A- with water. Here it is. We're going to produce hydroxide when A- reacts with H2O. And similar to what we did actually for the initial point on the titration curve, without any hydroxide added, we can apply an ice approach with the usual approximations here, but we need to use Kb rather than Ka. So I've done a quick calculation here that shows how to find Kb from Ka using Kw, and Kb comes out to 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10th power. Applying that, as well as an ice table and the usual 
x is small and zero initial hydroxide approximations, leads us to this expression for the pOH. It's equal to the negative log of the square root of the quantity Kb times the initial molarity of the base, A minus. And when you plug and chug with this, you get a pOH of 5.28. 14 minus that pOH gives you the pH 8.72. And indeed, this is greater than 7. So it makes sense. That's a nice sanity check for problems like this. Finally, let's talk about the 37.5 milliliter point. This is a point on the titration curve that is well beyond the equivalence point. So going back to our kind of prototypical diagram of a titration curve here, this is out here on the titration curve, maybe somewhere where it, around where it starts to bend or even in the sort of asymptotic region out here. And at this point, we've converted all the HA into A minus. And so the thing that's driving the pH here really is the added hydroxide. Hydroxide just keeps getting added and added and added to the analyte titrant mixture, and the volume is going up, so we're approaching, approaching, approaching the molarity of the titrant solution, the molarity of hydroxide in the titrant solution. And in fact, we're going to follow an approach here that is identical to the calculation for the strong acid, strong base titration. So I'm going to go through it pretty quickly. I've laid out the calculation here, but let's walk through it. So we've got an excess hydroxide situation, and what we really want to know to find the pH is the concentration of hydroxide, then we'll work to the pOH, and then to the pH. So what is the concentration of hydroxide after 37.5 milliliters of sodium hydroxide solution have been added in? Well, we're going to subtract out the portion that reacted with HA. So this expression in blue, that's the number of moles of HA in the original analyte solution. We're going to subtract that from the total moles of hydroxide added so that our numerator is the moles of hydroxide left in the solution. And the denominator is just the sum of the two volumes, 37.5 milliliters of sodium hydroxide titrant added plus the original analyte volume of 25 milliliters. So this gets us to an, a hydroxide concentration of 0 0.02 moles per liter, and the negative base 10 logarithm of that is the pOH, and this comes out to 1.699. The pH, that's 14 minus the pOH, and this comes out to 12.301. So this is approaching 13, which is the pH of a 0.1 molar NaOH solution. Now it will never quite reach 13 because of the initial 25 milliliters of the weak acid analyte solution, but it'll get asymptotically close as we continue to add titrant. And so the pH would go up and up and up closer and closer to 13 as we continue to add hydroxide. But the thing to notice here, and a really important conceptual thing to point out, is that this calculation is identical to the one we did in the strong, strong case, because it's the added hydroxide from the titrant at this point that's driving the pH of the analyte titrant mixture. 